Good morning, welcome to our Sunday service. This is the second Sunday of Trinity. Um, before the service begins, uh, Ian has interviewed Councillor Norman McRae, who's a member of uh, St John's, and that interview follows now. Well, good morning, Norman. Thank you so much for joining us for this interview this morning. And uh, a number of people won't know who you are because they're watching this for the first time or they're new in the church. So could you just explain to us all who you are? And Right. Uh, well, I can nearly say how long have you got? Right. I'm Norman McRae. I arrived in Bryce Norton with my family in 1980 to commence my VC10 conversion course. Uh, we lived in Carterton until 1996 when we moved to Philkins as we needed a larger house for our disabled son. Uh, unfortunately, he died when we lived in Philkins and we came back to Carterton in 2005. Uh, and I have ended up on the town council and district council at that stage and now just the district council. And obviously, as my haircut shows you, I left the Royal Air Force some time ago. And um, could you explain to us exactly what your work is at the present time? Uh, in one word, busy. Um, on, on a serious note, uh, I'm on the cabinet of the district council and it's very much like Westminster where we have the prime minister and his cabinet. So I have my own department and uh, I have environment and uh, it covers a whole multitude of things. I'll just reel them off. Car parking, waste collection, recycling, street steam, which is cleansing, littering, grounds maintenance, energy advice, flood alleviation, environmental and regulatory, that's all the licensing stuff, environmental partnership, safeguarding, community safety partnership, crime and disorder, neighbourhood policing, scrutiny of the police and crime commissioner, and emergency planning. So I have my, my own portfolio, that lot, and then as a cabinet, there are five of us with the leader. We have the uh, role of, of running the country, <laughs> the country, yeah. the, the, the <laughs> district. And uh, it's, it's a bit like Westminster, where you have, have the, the Prime Minister and his cabinet, we do the same thing. So I've been involved with my own portfolio matters. And then as a cabinet, we've been running the district and uh, doing the best we can to help people. And how big is the district exactly for the people watching? Well, it's a massive area. It goes from uh, Burford in the west to uh, Woodstock in the east and all the way up to just, south, uh, sorry, just north of Chipping Norton. 110,000 people live here. It's the second most rural district in the country. So it's a, a big area, covers a lot. And how have you all been coping in the corona crisis, via, uh, coronavirus crisis? Well, uh, as if I say politicians, I mean that very uh, modestly. We've been busy, but the guys who've been exceptionally busy are our officers. In very simple terms, uh, councillors, we have the ideas, the suggestions and what we want to happen, but the officers do the hard work. And our officers, many have been redeployed from what they would normally do to look after people in the COVID situation. Uh, many are working 60, 70 hour weeks. They're in at eight till six. Mm. Uh, been working flat out to help people throughout the district. Um, my own portfolio, I have uh, the, the refuse collection and I'm very proud of the, the guys who work for me by saying we have not missed any collection. We've kept our roadside collections of domestic litter, recycling, food and green waste going throughout. We to cancel our uh, bulk waste collection for a short time but that's back again. So we've been doing our very best to look after the district and I'm not unique. All the departments doing the same. Uh, my colleague Michelle Mead who's your mayor, uh, she has the health portfolio and she's been working flat out with her team to uh, look after the vulnerable people. It's, it's a team effort, it's not one person, the whole thing, it, it, it's a collective. Uh, one person can't do this. It, it, That's amazing. Now you've been a member of our church for many years. How do you find that your faith helps you with doing this very demanding job? There are times when you sit down and think, what am I going to do? Some quiet reflection, just sit and think, and you think, where did that idea come from? That's the answer. So just, Inspiration comes to you, you just you know that there's somebody who will help you out. You just sit there and you think, this is a bit busy. How am I going to get around this one? And things happen, as my wife Carol says, things happen for a reason. There's somebody there to look after us and uh, 
we're being looked after in very simple terms. Not very theological terms, I appreciate that, but that's the feeling that there's this personable God, he, he's there, just not on your face, but just on your shoulder. Right. And I think that's re very reassuring to us who are members of this, this district, <laughs> the field of people like yourself helping to coordinate it all and trusting in God to help you do that yeah. very difficult task. If, if we were to ask you, Norman, what you would like us all to pray for, what would it be possibly? There must be so many things that we could pray there for. There are. The first thing is, is patience. We've been locked up for some time and we're coming out now, but some people are still being, are still pretty uptight. So can we all have patience, please, as to try and work together and continue working together throughout this? Can we think of those who are feeling very lonely and vulnerable? Those who have been particularly shielded and haven't seen anybody for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I can give an example uh, from Michelle. Her, her, her officers rang this lady, elderly lady, on her own. She was down to her last crust of bread, literally a crust of bread, and she had nobody to help her. So people like that who knew, who knew the help and support who are feeling very vulnerable. Her children. I think it's dreadfully sad that children are not at school. They're missing out on education, but they're missing out on the social side as well. It's, you know, kids need other kids to grow up with, and uh, it's terrible they're missing, uh, say, the education, but the social aspect as well. Uh, and that's to pay for politicians, modestly, of all levels, as we work to try and bring the country out of this uh, and look after things. And finally, please can people just be alert, be aware, this virus has not gone away yet. There's still the potential to come back and catch us out. So please be very careful. Keep your distance if you can. But even more importantly, wash your hands. And yeah. that's not terribly difficult. Even for boys, wash your hands. Yeah. So may I say a little prayer? A little prayer. There's a lot of requests there. And I encourage everyone to keep praying for all these really important things. Okay. So I'll just say a little prayer in response to what you've said. So Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give great patience to people like Norman, who are behind the scenes, but doing so much for us locally. We pray particularly for the lonely, the housebound, those who've been self-isolating for a long time, that you would be with them in every way and continue to help the officers of the council and the district find those people so they can help them. We continue to lift up our schools with all our local school children and we pray that everything could be done in the best way to get as many of them back to school as soon as possible. We continue to pr pray for our politicians locally and nationally that you will continue to give them wisdom in all these important decisions and finally as Norman says we pray that you'd help us all to stay alert and do the basics, keep our distance, wash our hands and make sure that we don't forget that this virus still has to be fought and still needs to be defeated. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very, very much, Norman, and uh, to Carol, your wife, in the background. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. And we really appreciate that. And God bless you all in this very important work. And thank you. And indeed, if I may say thank you to you for what you've been doing. I know you've been working tremendously hard in the background as well. It is noticed and is appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. We're all doing our bit. Thank you. Thank you, Ian and Norman. We're now going to have our first hymn, which this morning is Over the Mountains and the Sea.
Jesus Christ be with you and also with you let's say the prayer of preparation together Almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all saying together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are, you are seated, seated at, at the right, right hand of the Father. Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
collect for the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Now going to have our first Bible reading, uh, which is going to be read by Vicky. This reading is taken from Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Vicky. We're now going to sing with uh, Stephen and Lizzie leading us. The song is called With a Prayer. After that, there'll be the gospel reading read by Ray, and then I will give the sermon.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. We hear Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. O oh Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure I've already told many of you the story of how I came to faith at the age of 25. It was, I was going through a time in my life when I was struggling with really low self-esteem. Uh, there were many aspects of my character and behaviour that I was unhappy with. I was, I was a great disappointment to myself at this stage. And uh, I was also confused and disappointed about the state of the world. All the inequality, all the war, all the uh, violence, all the dishonesty and so on that I found in the world. And I knew that there was something deeply wrong. I was looking for help and answers. And I found it unexpectedly. Uh, when I picked up a, a booklet, this one, um, in, in a second-hand bookshop while I was on holiday in Yorkshire, staying in a caravan uh, with my wife and young child. And I read that booklet from cover to cover before going to sleep. And somewhere between the first page and the last, I was converted. Uh, I was saved. I knew that the thing I was unhappy about in myself and with the world was something called sin. And I knew that Jesus had come into the world and decisively dealt with sin. And I knew that I had to commit the rest of my life uh, to being his follower. And what I experienced that night was an overwhelming sense of being affirmed and accepted and unconditionally loved by God. I couldn't really sleep. It was as though I lay awake in a warm glow of joy and unconditional love and acceptance for the first time in my life I really felt completely at peace and unafraid and many of you may have had a similar experience and 
naturally I wanted to share that experience and my new faith uh, with my family, my loved ones, my uh, work colleagues, my friends, I wanted to share it with them all. Um, but I didn't know how, and I wanted to get it right. And so I took advice from the people at my local church that I joined and the local Christian bookshop and read up how to share your faith, you know, how to share the gospel and uh, equip myself with some tracts and diagrams, learned to draw diagrams and things and memorized Bible verses uh, for each of the uh, stages of coming to faith. Uh, the message I was encouraged to share, to be honest, did seem a bit different from the experience I'd had, but it was obviously correct because it was written by very clever people and it was backed up at every stage uh, by the Bible verses. Now it led to many awkward encounters and uh, this kind of thing was happening. <clears throat> not to demonstrate one of those now. Slightly exaggerated, but not much. Jeff, Jeff mate, I'm glad I've got you You're here on your own. I just want you to know that Jesus died for you. Really mate? Well, um, why? Why did Jesus have to die for me? Well, simple, it's because of sin, because of our sin. What you're saying, I'm a terrible, awful person, are you? Wicked person. No, 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 Jeff, you're a great bloke, but the Bible teaches that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody is, in, is capable of keeping God's law. Well, if nobody's capable of keeping the law, surely God's not gonna hold that against me, is he? Well, unfortunately, yes, because the wages of sin is death. And, you know, justice requires, God's justice requires that you be sent to hell to be tormented uh, forever. That seems excessively harsh, mate. I know, I know, but there's good news because God has provided a way out for you uh, by sacrificing his son. What, God killed his own son? That doesn't make any sense. No, no, think about it. That's how much God loved you. That he was even prepared to kill his own son in order to save you. But I don't get it. How does killing his son make anything better? No, it does because it satisfies uh, God's need for punishment. The price for sin must be paid and it must be paid for with blood. Because why, without blood, there's no forgiveness. Well, this sounds pretty gross to me, to be honest. I know, I know, but can't you see, surely, that this is, you can see that this is the story of God's love and mercy, Jeff. Um, wouldn't you like to open your heart and ask him into your life today? Uh, actually, sorry, mate, I've just remembered I've got to be somewhere else. That was a slightly exaggerated story to make the point that the way many of us have learned to explain the good news make it sound like anything but good news. What I'd experienced in coming to faith uh, was the overwhelming love and acceptance and affirmation of God filling my life and beginning to heal me of what was wrong, beginning to transform me. But what I was told to tell people was, that they deserve to be punished by God forever. I was taught that the reason God's son died was because God demanded that someone had to suffer the penalty for sin in order to appease his wrath. No wonder I got a cold shoulder when I tried to tell this to friends uh, and family members and colleagues. Some of those relationships were lost forever. I also learned later, of course, that many people in our churches and many more outside our churches have internalized this hurtful view of God and of themselves because of this kind of teaching. Now in Matthew chapter 10, uh, our gospel chapter today, we hear a very different story. As Jesus gives instructions to the 12 he'd chosen to be his apostles, including the gospel writer, so we have it recorded, he explains that what the good news is, he explains what the good news is, 
and he explains how to share it. I wish I'd tried the approach in this chapter instead of all those tracts and diagrams and awkward conversations. Jesus sends the 12 to the lost sheep of Israel and he says, as you go, proclaim the good news. And this is it. The kingdom of heaven has come near. That's the good news there to proclaim. That's the message. And he immediately follows up with how to share that good news. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You've received without payment, give without payment. Let me unpack that a little bit. The good news of Jesus Christ is the kingdom of heaven has come near. Jesus brings the reign of God to earth, showing that God is not a distant judge totting up sins and demanding payment or punishment. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. 2 Corinthians 5.19 He brings a new way of relating to our maker and he draws us into its protection, its influence, its transforming love. This good news should be shared through acts of compassion, acts of healing, acts of solidarity with all who are lost, paying special attention to the damaged and the marginalised. You know, I think what the footballer uh, Marcus Rashford has achieved in the last week or two uh, has been far more effective in doing that uh, than all those awkward conversations I had uh, with people when I first came to faith. The first lesson in how to share the good news is to be compassionate. If we look at the whole life of Jesus in the four Gospels, this is exactly what we see from him, from his first breath to his last. In every encounter he has with friend or foe, he teaches too, of course, and his teaching is very challenging. He challenges people to repent, to change. He also has a lot to say about the consequences of sin in this life and the next. But everything he says and does is overflowing with compassion. That's the starting point. And his followers are called to share the good news in the same way. The second aspect to this lifelong work of sharing the good news uh, that he gives, this task he gives to his disciples, is to be courageous. Courage will be required because the call to come under the reign of God will be resisted by many people, especially by those who benefit most from keeping things just the way they are and who feel no need for God themselves. Even though he came with love and compassion and healing power, Jesus often got a rough reception and he tells his disciples to expect nothing less themselves. I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, he tells them. They will, they will hand you over to councils. They'll flog you in their places of worship. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, because of Jesus, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. A disciple is not above his teacher and, and the disciples will be treated no better than Jesus was treated. But the disciples should be courageous because divine help will be given to them at every stage to defend and sustain them through all trials and challenges. Authentic discipleship is costly as all the saints throughout history have learned and have taught. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer expressed it better than most in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, uh, which you may have read. Loyalty to God and to the work of compassionately and courageously sharing his good news is to take precedence over all other relationships, all other priorities. But disciples who take up this cross and follow Jesus will lose their old life, but they will gain a new, truly worthwhile life in its place. So you have to be compassionate and courageous to share the good news, the gospel. And those of you who've come across the Oxford Diocese vision, the common vision, know what's coming next. Sharing the good news of God's coming kingdom requires his church to be 
compassionate, courageous and contemplative. So contemplative, that might seem a bit of an anticlimax after those other two. And it might not be immediately obvious from Matthew chapter 10, but it is there. And I think it's the vital foundation for anyone to be able to be compassionate and courageous. To be clear, by contemplative, we're not talking about escaping from the world into a kind of fruitless navel gazing and lazy pondering. What we're talking about is a daily discipline of setting aside time for actually listening to God, of growing awareness of the spark that God has put inside us, of drawing deeply from the well of eternal life and of being actually healed and transformed for our discipleship instead of merely reading about it or chatting about it. Now, the most important lesson I've learned in the last 15 years or so it is why this is so important and how it can be achieved. I strongly recommend the method of meditation or contemplative prayer taught by the uh, World Community of Christian Meditation, WCCM. You can easily find their website and I can point you in the right direction. Uh, they were the organizers of the retreat I went on uh, last week uh, at a French monastery, uh, even though I never left my study. Uh, it was a WCCM organized retreat. And I'd love to teach this method of contemplative prayer to individuals uh, or to groups uh, in the church. We find the contemplative prayer of Jesus as a thread that runs right through the Gospels. We have him going off into the wilderness and spending a whole night sometimes in, in communion with his father, uh, just drawing on that relationship, drawing strength, uh, being equipped and prepared for his ministry. If he needed it, we need it. And, and throughout church history, in the lives of mature Christian disciples of all denominations, uh, we find contemplative prayer and meditation. And the value of contemplation is in Matthew 10, most clearly in verse 27. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. But it's also between the lines. Contemplative prayer is required if we're to understand what it means that the kingdom of heaven has come near. It's required so that you have something to offer when you are called to enter a house and let your peace come upon it. Uh, that's verse 13 and if you're to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit guiding you with the right words to say as you face all kinds of trials uh, verse 20 if you're to truly know in your own experience that even the hairs of your head are all counted um, quite an easy job in my case more difficult in others but all the hairs of your head are counted uh, do you know that to be true in your experience? That's verse 30. There are other ways, but the primary way that we are equipped to share the love and the life of God compassionately and courageously is through the daily discipline of contemplative prayer. I recommend it to you. In conclusion, the coronavirus crisis has given us many opportunities to grow more compassionate, and more courageous and these are vital elements in sharing the good news of God's kingdom, God's reign coming into the world. It has been a joy to see how many people in our churches have risen to this challenge, how many in the wider community have been sharing the love of God without being members of any kind of church. These qualities have clearly been demonstrated. There are also, for some of us, perhaps more opportunities for study than would normally be the case. And I recommend the study section of our St John's Church website in case you haven't discovered that yet. But don't forget the third C. Let's learn to be contemplative Christians and a contemplative church, even if that doesn't at first appear to belong in our particular branch or brand of Christianity. Yet it may be uh, the foundation and the key to fulfilling our potential. 
I want to end with a poem from the retreat. It's some words from a sermon uh, by Meister Eckhart, and it is uh, converted into poetry. It's called A Deep Stillness. A Deep Stillness. We are too often unhappy, while on and on the world remains the gift of presence God meant it to be at the beginning and sustains in every moment. And when we catch even a glimpse of this, our restlessness begins to open to a deeper stillness within us, where we will come to know that what is now torn apart and broken will finally come back to the stillness which rests in the deep oneness of this life and in the breadth of love. Amen. Now we're going to say the creed together. We, we believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and, and earth, of all, all that is, is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and, and was, was made man. For our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're now going to be led in our prayers of intercession by Steve. Let us pray. From the relative safety of our own homes, we offer our prayers to you in these still very uncertain times. With no clear and evident way ahead in this coronavirus crisis, we take comfort in the full knowledge that you are always there listening and giving us your peace for whatever needs we have and whatever challenges this coming week presents. We pray for all of our clergy who are continuing to minister to us in many different ways throughout this lockdown. We pray for Drew and Billy, for Ian, for Lindsay and for Stephen. Lord, continue to give them the strength, encouragement and wisdom to deliver your word and pastoral care in our parishes. We thank you that we're still able to receive your messages through the various media, which has truly helped spread your word around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in positions of authority and responsibility who are attempting to find a way through the coronavirus pandemic Lord, help them to listen to the information that is presented to them and to take heed of the advice given that they may take the right decisions as the country is eased out of the lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the consultants, doctors, therapists, nurses, support workers, porters, ambulance crews and the rest of the teams that contribute to the outstanding work of the NHS. They now have been working continually for over three months, 
often making personal sacrifices, sometimes not going home to their loved ones. As the pressures in the hospitals ease, we pray that the frontline workers cope with the stress and trauma that they have witnessed. We hold them in our prayers as we cannot comprehend the strain on their lives. Thank you, Lord, for their dedication and commitment and continue to uphold them in all their work. We pray too for all of the other key workers who are often unseen and unrewarded, yet are keeping this country going in these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are in need of your loving care, who are sick or suffering in other ways. Although we personally cannot be aware of the needs of all those in our fellowship, but you know what their true needs really are. So please be with them to give them comfort, ease their pain and reassure them in their needs. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones recently. The lockdown situation has made their grieving even more fractured due to some of the constraints. Lord, grant them comfort and your eternal peace. We think of the family of Vera Lynn, who passed away last week. As we all know, she was such a great inspiration during the Second World War and provided many families with a link to their husbands, sons and fathers serving overseas. We pray too for all those people who are struggling with the lockdown confused with the ever-changing rules, not knowing what they can and cannot do. Lord, be with them and give them an inner peace to help settle their minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. After the series of protests linked to the Black Lives Matter campaign, we pray that the true purpose of this campaign is not lost. We have learned of the horrors of the slave trade, but that happened in a different period of time. Let people see this from the right perspective, to learn from the errors of the past and to build for a better future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In closing, we should turn to the words from the Gospel. As Christians, we know there is always hope, so we should follow Jesus and not be afraid to take up the cross. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Steve. We're now going to share the peace Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, and we share his peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord always be with you. And also with you. We're now going to sing our offertory hymn. It's Beauty for Brokenness, and Mike and Linda are going to lead us in this one.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All, All things, things come, come from you, you and, and of your, your own do we give you. Prayer E on page 21. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Britius, John the Evangelist, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread, and forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead, lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. The 
Blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Post-communion worship song will be sung for us by Alistair, it's Wonderful Grace. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth, until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Father, Father of, all, of all, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and praise, praise that when, when we, we were still far off, off you, you met, met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness and we're going to be led by Jackie.
Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you've enjoyed today's service. If you are watching on Sunday morning, then do please join us afterwards. There's a Zoom meeting where we just have a drink and share some conversation. So it'd be good to get to know you, especially if you're with us for the first time. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to say. Huh? Um. <laughs>